What's up guys, Cody here with another ethereal video. This one taking a look at the Malaya Spotlight video. I'm going to quickly do an overview on her abilities and get straight into my thoughts on the kit and everything else we saw in the video. Malaya's passive Garnet Soul grants 1 or 2 stacks per basic attack. At 10 stacks, her next basic attack deals bonus damage, heals her, has increased range, and cleaves in the area in front of her. Her right click or special ability, Hunt of the Dashe, lets her hunt an enemy. If she kills them, she gets bonus XP and gold. Ability 1, Razor Claws, passively gives her attack speed and upon activation makes her next few auto attacks apply bleed. Ability 2, Retribution, gives Malaya a health shield. While active, the shield can absorb the first hard CC Malaya is affected by, which expends the shield and gives Malaya bonus move speed. Ability 3, Crimson Dash, is a dash that deals damage to enemies she passes through. She can store two charges of this ability at once. And her ultimate, Undying Garnet, makes her unkillable for two seconds and gives her life shield during and after the cast. So I was excited to see what Malaya's kit would be. I have to say, I was more interested in everything else in the video once I learned what her kit was. Visually, there's not a lot going on. And I get that she has a simple kit, but I feel like we can improve upon the visuals. For instance, maybe when her passive is stacked or she activates Razor Claws, she can have her claws turn red or at least get tinted red. And when she dashes, I want there to be more of a trail to the dash. Just small things like that to make the abilities more visually interesting and appealing. The ultimate doesn't have a flashy visual to it either, but it should be fine as long as it's accompanied by an easily recognizable sound cue so that it prevents any unnecessary confusion in fights for her enemies. Gameplay wise, there's a couple things I don't like about the kit. First off, it's trying to do two things at once, be an on-hit melee fighter while also being an assassin. The closest thing I can relate this to from League of Legends is Master Yi, however Master Yi's kit is much better suited for this playstyle instead of Malaya's. Namely, Master Yi has more self peel in his Q Alpha Strike, which is a blink to his target that allows him to dodge abilities and CC and gets reset on the takedown. Malaya doesn't have an ability like that. The best thing she can do in team fights is double dash into the backline, pop her shield and all, and pray she doesn't get hit by multiple crowd control effects. If there's a lot of suns in the game, then this wouldn't really be a problem, but I doubt that's going to be the case though. And that still doesn't rule out the fact that her passive and her bleed aren't abilities that are useful on an assassin especially as the game transitions into mid and late. The bleed and the passive stacking auto attack thing, those are abilities that are tailored towards elongated fights, which early on should be able to do, but in team fights, that's just not something that's gonna happen. So here's how a playstyle is gonna look like. Early game, she'll be very strong since she has two dashes, but she'll still wanna be focusing ganking lanes that have enemies with low mobility or lanes with allies that can set up ganks for her. If she gets fed early enough, she'll be able to get onto people and burst them down very easily, and she'll have done her job for the game. Team fights won't ever be an issue because of the massive lead she'll have gotten for herself and her team. If this doesn't happen though, if she doesn't get a massive lead, then she's going to feel pretty useless. Generally, not having enough damage to kill her targets fast enough. Once again, the whole she's trying to do two things at once issue. In this situation in team fights, she's going to be forced to get into a good flanking position and wait for her team to soften up the enemy before she goes in. If her team can't do that because they're too far behind, then she won't be able to do anything either. So TLDR about Malaya's kit, she's going to be a massive feast or famine champion that ends up having a somewhat awkward kit come in late game, if not ahead. Her kit is also very simple, which is fine, but at high elo she's going to fall flat as her one dimensional snowball heavy game style will struggle to find success. With Malaya out of the way, let's talk about everything else in this. We got to see more of the map, which is great. I love how it all looks, especially to the entrance to the Fire Wyvern Cave is just mmm. Talus is the myth they have Malaya beating up on, which potentially means we're getting a Talus spotlight next week? Question mark? And that would be really interesting to me, since we know very little about his kit outside of he gets resistances on takedowns. And I want to see if I can take him as a support, because that'd be a lot of fun. Another thing to note about Talos, they do show us Malaya getting knocked down or CC'd in some way by some type of quaking wave ability. Maybe this ability belongs to Talos, where he would slam his axe onto the ground and it would cause this type of effect. Alice's original alt voice line was, get down, so this could be it, or maybe this was shifted to another normal ability for Talos. 
Other interesting things we saw, we got a fresh look at Atropos and his pit, which is nice. And we got a view of one of the jungle camps. They look like they might be some type of lizard folk or something. I don't know. It looks interesting, though. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for my thoughts on the Malaya Spotlight. I know I ragged on her a lot in this, but it's because I know characters with simple kits end up being unviable at high levels of gameplay, which is where I'm going to be playing at. Unless, obviously, the character is extremely oversaturated, in which case they're just broken. Simple characters are also hard to balance because of this issue. And with what I've seen in the past in League of Legends, these type of characters are just left as is. Good or extremely dominant at low elos, and unplayable the higher up you get on the ladder. So it's just hard for me to get excited over a myth I know isn't going to be viable in the long term for me, and I won't see a lot of play of her at my level once more myths are introduced. All that said though, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more Aetherworld content. Looking forward to maybe a Talus reveal next week. Talus reveal, come on! But anyways, thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.